So for our flower bag, you will need two colors. And I have both of my yarns here from Peaches and Creme. They are a medium four weight yarn in 100% cotton. This one is in the color gold and this one is an acru and I am using a four millimeter hook. To begin, you're going to want to prepare a magic circle and chain one. Now inside this magic circle, go ahead and place a single crochet and chain up one. Now this first sequence that we just did here is going to count as your first double crochet, so I am going to mark the top of that last chain. And inside the magic circle, we're going to need a total of 10 double crochets. So now that we've done one, go ahead and place a, right, a series of nine regular double crochets inside the circle. So one. Two, three, after you've made a total of 10 double crochets, which includes that very first set that we did, you can go ahead and tighten your circle and you're going to slip stitch into this very first chain that we marked here. So slip stitch into that space. And that completes your circle. So now you're gonna start round two and what you're going to do is go back into that very same space that you just did. It's going to be a little bit tight but try to get in there and complete a single crochet. And then chain up one again and then mark that chain up of one to count as your first double crochet. So in this second round, we are going to be increasing in every single chain. So that means in that same spot, you're going to place a regular double crochet. So now there are two double crochets in that very first chain. Now in every single chain, you're going to increase. So you're gonna be placing two double crochets in every single chain until you reach the end and you should end up with a total of 20 double crochets in this round. After you've completed your 20th double crochet, you're gonna go into that same chain where you marked in the beginning and you're going to slip stitch. Now to make round three, we're going to be increasing again. So to start round three, go ahead and insert your hook in that same space again where we just slip stitched and you're going to place a single crochet and a chain up of one. Now mark that chain one because that's gonna count as your first double. And again, in this round, we'll be increasing every other chain. So that first one that double crochet we're going to leave that chain for now because we're only increasing every other so this is a no increase so that means in the next chain you're going to place two two double crochets in that next chain now in the next one you're only going to be placing one double crochet now two double crochets into the next one one double crochet and you're going to continue this pattern until you reach all the way around and in your very last chain you will be placing two double crochets because we started with only one that means you're going to end with the increase and at the end of the round you should have a total of 30 double crochets so now that you've made your final increase in that last chain go ahead and double count that you have 30 double crochets all around and now we can slip stitch to that chain marker where we placed in the beginning. But because we're going to be switching colors for the next round, we're gonna slip stitch a little differently. So to do that, go ahead and just insert your hook like you normally would for a slip stitch. Just like that. And then you're gonna grab your second color. You're gonna prepare it with a slip knot at the end. 
and then that's what you're going to use to pull through the slip knot. So you're going to go through the chain and then that final chain that you have. So that makes sure that you have a invisible switch in colors. So now let's start the third round with our white yarn and you can go ahead and cut off this yellow yarn since we're now complete with that color. And what you can actually do is make a knot with the yarn that you just cut and the new one you attached so everything stays nice and tight. Just make a little knot like that. So now to begin our next round, we're going to be increasing in this round again. So remember in our increase, we're going to go back in that same chain that we pulled a slip stitch through. We're going to grab the white yarn now and we're going to complete a single crochet. And then you can go ahead and chain up one to count as your first double and don't forget to mark it. So in the previous round, we increased in every second stitch. So this time we're gonna increase in every third stitch. So this is gonna be our first stitch. And then we're going to do another one. In the next chain, place a regular double crochet. So now that we have two regular double crochets with no increases, that means in this third one, we're going to increase with two double crochets. That's one and two. So again, repeat that sequence, place two double crochets, one, two, and in the third one, place an increase with two double crochets. So again, three regular double crochets, And then in the third one, a double crochet increase. So you're gonna continue repeating this sequence all the way around till you get to the very first chain. And at the end of it, you will have a total of 40 double crochets. So now that I've completed my 40 double crochets, before I slip stitch, go ahead and count and make sure that you have a total of 40 in this round because in the next few rounds, we're gonna be making our petals and if your double crochet counting is off, then your petals will not work. So after you made sure you have 40, go ahead and just slip stitch into that very first chain. So now we're going to be beginning our petals and each round for our petals the sequence is going to be a little bit different so I'll show you how to do the next round. So I will not be chaining up at all. You're going to go into that same space that you just slip stitched into and you're going to start with a single crochet and then mark that single crochet so you know where you started. And this is going to be the sequence for the petals for this round. Single crochet. And then in the next one, place a half double crochet. In the next chain, place a double crochet. In the next one, place a double crochet increase. So you're going to place two double crochets in this one. And then in the next one, do another double crochet increase. So again, place two double crochets in that next one. Now go back down to just one double crochet in the next one, a half double crochet in the next, and then a single crochet to complete the sequence. So for this round, that is the sequence of our flower. Let's do it again. So we started with a single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, 
double crochet increase. Double crochet increase again. Double crochet. Half double crochet. And single crochet. And you just created the second petal. So you can't see it yet, but these petals will begin to take shape as we complete the rounds. So you're going to go ahead and repeat the sequence for this petal until you have a total of five petals. Again, that sequence was single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, double crochet increase, double crochet increase, double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet. So you're going to repeat that sequence until you have a total of five petals. All right, so I've gone ahead and as you can see, I have my five petals, one, two, three, four, five. I'm almost finished with my last petal here and I just did my half double crochet. So that means the final stitch in the sequence is a regular single crochet. So now that completes that round and you're gonna go ahead and slip stitch into the chain marker. So now let's continue shaping our petals by doing the second round. So again, I will not be chaining up at all. I'm just going to go straight into that same chain that I slip stitched into. And this is going to be the sequence for the second round of petals. So into that same chain that you slip stitched into, start with a single crochet. And go ahead and mark that single crochet because that's going to be your beginning chain. So this sequence will be single crochet and then in the next one you're going to do a half double crochet. Into the next one you will be doing a double crochet. Into the next one you'll be placing a double crochet increase so that means two double crochets in this one now into this next one you will be doing an extended double crochet increase so what that means is you're going to yarn over insert your hook and you're going to pull your yarn just as you would for a double crochet but instead of pulling those first two loops you're only going to pull one at a time so you're going to go one yarn over and pull through the second, yarn over and pull through the third. So that is an extended double crochet. So again, in this chain, you're gonna do an extended double crochet increase. So you're gonna do it one more time in that same chain. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over, pull through one. Now in the next chain, you're going to do a tr an extended double crochet increase again. So do it again on the next chain. And this is an increase, so you're going to do it again in that very same chain. Now in the next one, you're going to do a regular double crochet increase. So two double crochets in this next one. And then you're going to place a regular double crochet in the next chain. And then in the next one, you're going to do a half double crochet. And then you end with a single crochet. So that's the sequence for the second round of petals. And let's do it again together. So the sequence goes single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, 
double crochet increase extended double crochet increase extended double crochet increase again double crochet increase double crochet half double crochet And single crochet. So that is the sequence for round two of the petals and as you can see it's already beginning to take shape. So what you're gonna do is just repeat that sequence all across the rest of the petals until you end up here. So again, again the sequence was single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, double crochet increase, extended double crochet increase, extended double crochet increase, double crochet increase, double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet. So you're gonna repeat that sequence all the way across until you end up at the end. All right, as you can see, I have gone around and completed my five petals and I'm almost done with this final petal here. So I just finished completing my half double crochet. So that means I'm gonna end the sequence with a single crochet. And now I can go ahead and slip stitch into the chain marker. And let's start the final round of our petals. So this is going to be the sequence. And again, I'm not chaining up. So you're going to go into that same chain that you slip stitched into and you're going to start with a single crochet. And go ahead and mark your single crochet. So after your single crochet, you're going to do a half double crochet, a double crochet, double crochet increase another double crochet increase extended double crochet increase another extended double crochet increase a double crochet increase Another double crochet increase. Now a double crochet. Half double crochet. And a single crochet. So that is going to be the sequence for our final round of petals and we're going to continue to repeat that until we have a total of five. So let's do the next one together again. Now in this last round between every petal you're going to skip two chains before you begin the sequence again. So I'm going to skip one and two and in this third one I'm going to begin my sequence again. So again that was a single half double, double, double crochet increase, a 
another double crochet increase. This is my second double crochet increase. And then you're gonna do a an extended double crochet increase. Another double extended, another extended double crochet increase. Now a double crochet increase. Another double crochet increase. Now a double crochet. A half double crochet. And a single crochet. So you can see the petals are taking on a really nice shape here. And again, before you begin your next petal and follow that same sequence, you're going to be skipping two chains, one and two. And in this third one, you're gonna start your sequence all over again. So continue the sequence all the way around until you reach a total of five petals. And do not forget to skip two before starting a new petal. And then I'll meet you at the end. So as you can see, I've almost completed my final round here and I wanna show you that I just did my final single crochet and you can see my stitch marker from the beginning of the round is still two chains away, one, two. So those are gonna be the two chains that we skip. So that means when you complete that final petal, go ahead and just skip those two chains again and slip stitch into where the stitch marker was. And at this point, you can go ahead and chain one and snip off your yarn. And this will complete your flower. So you want to make sure at this point that you've weaved in all your ends. And if I measure my flower... You can see that from one petal to the other petal is about seven and a half inches. And that goes all around. The center is about three inches and all the way across is about seven and a half. So of course you're gonna want to repeat everything that we did to this side and you're gonna make a whole nother petal. So then we can put those two petals together, make our straps and complete our bag. Okay, so now that you have your two flowers, it's time to seam them together. So what you're gonna do is mark where you're gonna start and end your seaming. So the flower bag is actually supposed to be like this with this as the top and these are where the straps come out of. So you're gonna wanna mark where you want your straps to come out of and you wanna make sure that your hand fits in between the two straps so that when you go and put stuff in your bag and take some, off, take some stuff out, your hand will fit. So. I'm going to show you where I'm going to mark mine. So do you remember when we skipped the two chains before starting the sequence of the next flowers? You're going to see those two chains down here, this one and this one. You're going to look at the, the chain right above that, which is right here. So that's going to be your middle point, and you're going to mark... The equal amount of stitches away on this side and the equal amount of stitches away on this side so for me my hand fits if i mark away nine so starting from this point right here i'm going to count nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine and i'm going to mark that stitch right here so now i'm going to do the same to this side so here's my middle point right here so i'm going to count nine away one it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And I'm just going to mark that. Just like that. So now you're going to want to take your other flower and do the same thing. And make sure you're looking at right sides 
up because so, there is a wrong side to this and you can tell which one is right wrong side and which one is right side so now we're going to do the same to this one we're going to just find that middle piece right there it's the chain above the two chains that we skipped so this is that chain and i'm going to count nine away one two three four five six seven eight nine so i'm going to mark that ninth one I'm going to do the same to the other side. There's the middle stitch. I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So now that I have all four of those marked, I am now going to put right sides together. So right now we have right sides up. So we're just going to flip this over like this, and we're going to seam from the inside out. You want to line up your first two markers like this and you're going to remove this first one and you notice that when you have chains there's always two two bars across it so we're only going to be working on the outside bar of this one and the outside bar on the other one so we're working into the loops that are farthest away from each other. So this one and that one. So what you're gonna do is take your yarn and prepare a slip knot at the end and you are going to put it through the outside loop of this one. Then you're gonna take off the stitch marker on this one and you're gonna insert into the outside loop just like that. And you can pull your yarn through and you're going to chain up one to secure it. So now you're just going to work along the entire flower doing that same thing. You're just going to single crochet using those outside loops. So let me show you how to do that. So then you go into the next available chain and you're going to take the outer loop of this one. And then you're going to go into the next one, take the outer loop on the back part and you're going to single crochet. Again, working on this petal, you take the outside loop and then the petal in the back, you are going to take the next outside loop and you're just going to single crochet and you're going to continue seaming up your bag in this way. You're going to go and single crochet into every stitch available until you reach all the way to your last two markers and when you get there do not cut off your yarn because we're just going to make the straps ahead from there so just continue doing your single crochets into the outer loops making sure you're grabbing both sides of the bag in every single crochet. All right, I have finished single crocheting all the way across and if you notice, I didn't cut off my yarn at the end, I just pulled up a big loop. So now we can turn it right side out so you can see what it looks like. And you see, because we did the single crochet on the inside, it has this really nice side seam here that kind of has like a 3D effect because we were only going into those outer loops. So it does give it that little bit of a 3D effect. And this is what the outside looks like. And the sides. So because we left our loop on, we can go ahead and make our straps from here. So with your yarn still attached, you're going to chain up 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12. So after your 12th one, you are going to pull up a little loop like this, and you're going to yarn over. You're going to hold that loop tight so it doesn't slip off your hook, and you're going to insert into that last chain there, and you're going to pull up a loop. You're going to pull up one, and you're going to do it again. Two, and one more time. Three. So after you have three loops, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all of those loops. And then you're going to chain up three. One, two, three. And you're going to make another loop again. So you pull up a little one and then insert your hook three times into that last chain. So you're going to yarn over first and you're going to do one, yarn over for two, yarn over again, and three. And after you have those three, you can yarn over and pull through all three. And you're going to do it one more time. So chain three, pull up a loop and pull up a little puff stitch by yarning over and pulling through three times. One, two, and three. Then yarn over, pull through all the loops. And after you have three like this, go ahead and chain 12 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then from here, you can start your sequence of the three puffs again. So after 12 chains, you're going to pull up a little loop and you're going to do a puff stitch. You're going to pull up one, two, and three loops. And you're going to yarn over and pull through all. And then you're going to chain up three again. One, two, three. Pull up your loop for your second puff stitch and pull up three loops. One, two, and three. And you're going to yarn over and pull through all of them. And chain three again. One, two, three. And you're going to do it one more time so you have a total of three every time. Pull up your loop and make a puff stitch. One, two, three. And then after you make your last puff stitch, you're always going to want to chain 12 in between the set of three. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And you're going to keep going with this sequence until you make a chain that's long enough for your liking. And then you want to make sure that you end on the chain 12 so we can slip stitch it to the edge of the other bag. So keep going with, for however many inches that you want your chain to be. End on the chain 12 and then slip stitch it to the side. All right, so I did finish my strap here, and how many sets of the bobbles did I do? I did one, two, three, four, five, and six sets, and I did make sure to end on that chain 12 so I can attach it to the other bag, or the other side. And if I measure it, my chain strap is it's about, 39 and a half, like 39 to 40 inches. So again, depending on how long you want yours, you can just customize it to your needs. So because I didn't cut off my yarn and I left it, I'm just gonna go ahead and slip stitch this right to the other side. So here's my other side here, and I'm gonna go from the inside I'm gonna go from the inside of the bag and I'm going to find the first little chain right here. There's not an exact space so you can just choose wherever it's going to be the most secure and I'm just going to slip stitch it to that. Then 
And I'm just going to chain one and cut off my yarn. And I'm just going to make sure to weave that in. All right, so now that I've just gone ahead and completed the straps, we're gonna add our little button and strap to close our bag. So you can use whatever button you like for this. You don't even have to use a real button. You can make a crochet button if you know how to do those, but I have this little pearl button that I wanna use. So of course this little button has a loop, so I'm actually just gonna cut a piece of my yarn and just thread it through. So I'm probably just gonna put it somewhere in the middle, like right here, right where the two petals dip to meet each other. Okay, so now that I've attached my button, I'm just gonna make a little loop that goes around it to secure my bag. So I did size down again. I'm at three and a half millimeters now, just because I want this part to be really tight. So I'm just gonna flip the bag over and I'm going to find that middle stitch right here and I'm just get, probably going to make my loop on the two stitches right next to it. So I'll start here with my yarn. I'm just going to make a slip knot at the end. And I'm just going to pull it through. Now the amount of chains that you make here is dependent on the size of the button that you created. So I'm just going to keep checking to see if mine goes around comfortably. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I'm gonna check this to see if it will go around nicely. Okay, so it's not long enough, it's still too tight, so let's keep going. Nine, ten. 11, I'm going to check 11. It's still a little bit small. 12, 13, let's try that. I'm just going to go for 15, 14, 15. And once you have your chain that goes comfortably around your button, you're just going to attach it back to the bag. I'm going to skip the middle chain. I'm going to go to the one right next to it. And I'm just going to slip stitch into that. Chain up one and cut. Then I'm going to make sure to weave in that those two ends so they're not moving around and then once you have your loop your purse is now complete your little flower bag and then you can just close this so nothing falls out of the top of your bag well, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you get to make your own bag soon. And if you do, let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to see more tutorials, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.